Hello. So let's see how you can create a simple scroller using HTML and basic CSS and, and JavaScript. So we are going to be creating something like this from scratch using a library called Scrollama and like modern standards for it. So let's get started. So let's get rid of all of this. And then basically what we have in here is just a simple folder. I have two files, my index.html. Then I'm going to start with a template. I'm using Emmet. So that's why I have this beautiful autocomplete. And then in here, I'm just going to put some content. Like let's say that I create like some lorem text in here. Then uh, in, the, the, in the header, I'm going to put some style. And then um oops i shouldn't have put that in a h1 so let's say that this is going to be hola scroller then close this one and then this is just going to be a div and <coughs> this is going to close my div and here on the div i was saying that i want the body to have like font family sans serif and I want a margin, let's say that at least 20 pixels. <coughs> so now it's looking better. And let's say that I'm going to have a font size of, I don't know, by 14 big points at least. Something a little bit more real. So apart from that, then let's create here a separator. And let's say that maybe here comes my, um, my visualization. So one of the things I can do is separate these things with sections. So in this section, I'm going to have my, let's put this at the end, oops, of the previous one. And then in here, let's say here comes my piece. Okay. So basically what I want on this one, it's that I'm going to put a div in here that I'm going to put a class called holder. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can read it. And then inside that, I'm going to create an SVG. And that SVG, uh, it's just going to have, uh, it's going to be my chart. And next to it, I'm going to put a div that I'm going to call, um, like, I don't know, like, let's say it's steps. So, Inside that one, I'm actually going to put a uh, deep step uh, multiplied by 10, maybe. And also, I wonder if I can HR, will that work? No, it doesn't work. So at least give me that. Oops, uh, let's put it like this. And then inside Lauren, will that work? No much so let's um, do this one so I want my 10 of these ah it's not giving me what I want now step multiply by 10 there we go so oh I still can do this I guess so I'm going just to put some extra text in there let's say <coughs> it seems like when I'm completing like that it doesn't give, let me write the whole thing so let me put just the text like this and copy all of this in here so basically what i want is after this section let's put another section and let's say the end or whatever and then finally guess what another lorem text so I'm going to do some formatting. Uh, basically, here it's my ESVG. And then I have this text. This one I want it to be on the right side. So one way of doing that is that I can say that my holder, that I remember that I use class holder, is going to have a display flex. So that allows me to separate things into blocks. As you can see, these start moving uh, better. And then my steps are going to have a width of, I don't know, like say 40%. And my chart, it's going to have a width of 
let's say 50% with a um, margin um, margin right of 5% at least okay so with this basically I'm going to have my visualization in here and then I'm going to have this text on the right now inside each one of these steps I want to have a margin uh, say top of 50 pixels and then let's say that the mean height of this is going to be I don't know like 400 pixels or something like that like advantage of doing that as you can see now is that it's going to separate them so that way you can guarantee that there are not going to be that many at the same time on the screen so people are going to have space for scrolling uh, having done that then we can start creating our d3 visualization so for that i'm just going to include the script for d3 and that's going to come um, as uh, https uh, d3js.org slash d3 version 6 and i'm going to include the full library so in case i get any mistakes and finally i'm going to include my script so this script it's slash main js and it's this one that i have in here and in there i'm just going to start initializing i do use uh, ESLint, so I am going to say that I have a global D3 in there. And then I'm just going to select my SVG, doing D3, select SVG. And then actually let's call this circles. And what I'm going to do first is create some data. So let's say that I'm going to create like, uh, like 20 points and then uh, generate some random data for them like and then put those in an object this is going to be mat random <coughs> and y is going to be a mat random and I can multiply this by a height and I can do the same here with a width so now I need a width of 400 and a height of 400 that of course you can put on whatever range you want having done this then what I can do is that inside the SVG I'm going to select all, let's say, circles. And then I'm going to do some data binding with my data. Then, as you have seen, we can join that with a new circle. So let's start drawing them at the middle of the screen. And then uh, CX, CY. So same value, but anyhow. So, and then a the radius. So like something visible like 10 and finally a style of fill <coughs> with a common color with like steel blue or something like that so now I have a bunch of dots that are all exactly in the same position and then what I want is that I would like to be able to say um, like for instance let's say that I create a couple functions let's say it's like move left and then this function, what it will do is that it will take my circles, it will start a transition with a duration of, I don't know, like one second, it could be less, let's say like 750 milliseconds. And then in there, I'm just going to put uh, uh, all the CXs, is going to move them to the left. <coughs> let's do another one that says, move right and then or actually move x and let's say that this one is going to take them to d dot x and in here let's say that i do another one that it's called move y that is going to send the same thing but for the y coordinate something like this move a so basically what i want is that i want to define something that allows me to call these functions whenever the user is scrolling so you can achieve that very easily nowadays with modern browsers just by listening to the on scroll event so if you add an event handler and this is the default way of doing that on um on JavaScript, like in the browser, 
Uh, then you can pass a function in here that is going to be our event handler. And then you can just say, I think you can get uh, window uh, Y, I think, or, or if you actually go and in here, uh, let's say that you search for MDN on scroll. <coughs> So if you check for that, then you can find an attribute call on scroll y. So let's say this is going to be my scroll y. So having done that, I can come back here and then after reloading this and uh, passing through here. So it should be add event handler is not a function, so I'm having an error in here. Um, let's actually cheat a little bit and then reuse the one that they have in here. Oh, it's event listener. Good thing I opened that. <coughs> so I can now reload this, and then now you can see that I can listen for that. So they, you could actually go and use that and go and check at what position are each one of those things located, and then Using this thing, you can find what is the current one active. However, uh, another thing you could do, and it's, which is going to be easier, is to use a library called Scrollama. There is a bunch of libraries for scrolly telling. I even have one in case you want to check it out. If you use something like reveal.js, um, scrolly telling, I think it's how I call it. And, um, Reveal.js is currently telling, here it is. So go and take a look at this in case you use Reveal.js. It's going to allow you to do the same thing, but inside the framework of Reveal. But Scrollama is quite nice because it's very easy to use and you don't need to add much, much code. Like for instance, here are the scripts that you need to add on the browser. So make sure to put that before your main.js. And then as you can see down here, you only need to instantiate I scroll llama and then uh, listen for events. So actually I'm going to get rid of this and then I'm going to do this one. And if you come in here, then you see added this and then I have a couple events. One when the, the element the step is enter and you can see that it even have a class that is the same one that we use in here for each one of these steps. You can see the step in there. So that step is what we want. And then we can just do something like console log response or something like that. And let's say that this is enter. And then <clears throat> let's put another one in here that says exit. So when you do that, and we come back in here, then uh, every time I enter one of these things, then it lets me know that it's entering or exiting one of them and then changing things. Good. So. One of the other things I want is like, for instance, I could go and say, like an easier way of doing this will be to have like callbacks in here and then have this as an array or something. And then I just put them in order in here since they are going to be all called by the, uh, they're going to be called by the order in which they, they are found on the stepper then I can just do this and then just select manually from that. Let's actually uh, be very lazy and then copy and paste this many times. So now I have all of this. Hopefully I have more than steps so it, it doesn't go outside. And then what I can do is that I can just say something as simple as just say callback on callback on the position I and that is going to return a function so I just call it. So, and I think this is callbacks, that's why this is called a, a complaining and response index, as you can see here in the documentation. So now, as you can see, like when I get into a point, it's moving, but now I cannot see this uh, because I'm scrolling. So one of the other tricks that you need is that you need to tell, change the attributes of this, and you need to say that this is going to have a position sticky. And position, it's a CSS property that you can use for positioning an element on the screen. And sticky is one that is going to, to stay in there 
but relative to their parents. And one of the of, of two of the other attributes that you need to change in there are the top and left uh, positioning uh, CSS or styles. And then also you need to tell it like what is the height of this thing because otherwise it can get like all of the screen. So when I do that, now it sticks in there. The beauty is that it, if it's not yet there, then it will stay, wait until it has its time. And then I can come in here and then you can see that it started moving. And then I have the other one. And then, well, it actually came out very nicely. So now a final touch could be uh, that I that that is very similar to the library that I was using. Then actually it wasn't a library, just everything was pretty much implemented by scratch. <laughs> is that you can do something like this. You can say my steps are going to be a D3 select all of all of my step. And then once you have done that, then uh, you can come in here and you can and you can you, you see that we have this element. <coughs> so what we can say is that we can say uh, that all of the style uh, opacity of all of the elements is going to be 0.1, but the one that is currently selected. So I'm going to do D3 select of the element. I'm going to change the style of that one with opacity of 1.0. So this one, as you can see, beauties of ESLint is telling me that that doesn't exist. So now when I do this, then you can see that they are uh, like kind of disabled until they, this one en enables them. And then you can see them in there. And then it's just a matter of um, going and implementing uh, the whole uh, logic that you have on your um, on your scrolling scroll up, let's scroll I just want to remove this thing in here sorry and this error I guess and these the idea is that you put like descriptive text you also have to control for things like what happens when someone when my chart lands lands on a specific step because as you saw in there it got a weird behavior just because the page reload. And then uh, you can even add more elements in here and the scrolling will stop once that thing it's it's gone. Like if I keep on adding lorems, for instance, in here, uh, like this maybe, then now you can see that it's going to go away. Uh, so it's sticky, it's quite nice for that. You can control the details in that, but that's the basics on how you can do scrolling telling with the tree and modern browser.